All right, everybody, this is three questions with CJ Rogers. CJ. Oh. Hey, man. Okay, CJ is actually the first guest I've had in my new uh, office. And so, and CJ, I got to, I got to, CJ is actually a Bears fan and like right away, right? And I even got, there it is. There it is, man. And so, we got, so you, I got to ask you this right away. So we're going to do the three questions here, but I got to, I'm going to throw in a bonus question because CJ, uh, he's a, is an associate superintendent in, in assistant superintendent, assistant superintendent. But him and I connected uh, for a lot of reasons, but he's also a Bears fan. But do you kind of feel guilty that you, your spelling of your last name is the same as the Green Bay Packer guy? Oh, man. You know, I've been <laughs> dealing with that. I've been dealing with that. My whole, I cannot wait. You know, I was the first guy that was like, man, is he leaving? Like, is he leaving Green Bay? <laughs> because that would, that would have solved all of my anxiety. Seriously. Listen, man, when I actually, when I'm in an airport, sometimes I wear like a, like a, a toque. That's what we call it in Canada. Yeah. And I got yeah. my hair kind of curling out. I got the beard. I get some Aaron yeah. Rodgers once in a while. Yeah. Right? I can like, see it. I can see not, it. As much as we make fun of him, we would take him on the bears any day. Right? Look, <laughs> He's, any so day. Good. He's so good. <laughs> any day. Well, hey, CJ, I, CJ, uh, CJ and I connected. It was actually awesome. He, he, I, I spoke at his district in Harris County uh, in July and we'll talk more about this. I'll ask you more about this. But CJ actually gave me one of the most uh, personal introductions I've ever had. And it was like really powerful because you, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people, you know, they don't even know anything about me. And then they just, re- they just like read a bio. And I'm like, yeah. but you actually like watch my podcast and you like yeah. saw stuff. And um, yeah. And you even said, didn't you say, tell me your wife was watching the podcast now too? Yeah, my, my my wife's a teacher. Um, watch the podcast, read the book. You know, she she we're, you um you you've been dinner conversation a couple of times in the Rogers house. Okay. What is your what is your wife's name? Cherie Rogers. Cherie, guess what? Guess what you're getting? Well, air horn. <laughs> Cherie's getting an air horn. So if you are listening, Cherie, like I'm expecting a comment on YouTube or something, right? That yeah. you're listening. Yeah. So so so, so George, if you're listening, I, she knew that was gonna come. <laughs> you know, she, yeah, she is definitely listen. Now, here's the only request that I have, George, like a okay. very right. low maintenance when it comes to this man. But I need at least five of those. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, so that's one. We, we, that's one. You get them. You get them. Right. You'll get them. Don't worry. Don't worry. If anything, people, you know, kind of expect that now. So yeah. it's going. whether you want it or not, you're getting the air horn. Hey, so I heard, I heard, I forget who it was, but somebody was giving you a hard time about it. I'm like, no. We need more, not less. <laughs> exactly, more exactly. More air horn, right? Like the yeah. it's the it's the modern more cowbell is more <laughs> air horn, right? So CJ, it was awesome meeting you, and uh, we just clicked right away. And I just love the stuff that you're doing in Harris County. We're going to talk more about that in the podcast, but uh, we want to hear about your inspiration. So when you think about um, in your career, a teacher that inspired you, whether one that you taught with, one one that taught you when you were a kid, who's someone you think of and, and who inspired you, and why? Yeah, George, you know, the, the person that came to my head immediately was Miss Belinda Brown. Um, I had Miss Brown. She was my fifth grade teacher and my seventh grade teacher. And, um, you know, I, I was a pretty, pretty good student. Um, mm-hmm. And for some reason, and I, I honestly think that, like, my hormones was kicking in and I had a crush <laughs> on Miss Brown. And so, you know, I just there were some behavior issues there. Right. 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 Um but Miss Brown, I'll tell you, Miss Brown was the first teacher that ever sat down with me and said to me, hey, look, I understand that you're struggling with this class for whatever reason. Yeah. First of all, I apologize, right, because I want to make sure that you can be your best self here. But then she sat down and she was the first teacher that ever asked me for feedback. You know, she blatantly said to me, you're going into seventh grade year, right? What is it that you need from me as your teacher mm-hmm to get the best out of you, man. And that, that, that has always stuck with me um, throughout my teaching and my coaching career. It's just like, man, the power of this, you know, this woman coming to me as, you know, uh, what, what was a 12 year old and saying, Hey, what is it that you need from wow. me? You know, that, it, it was very powerful, man. It still sticks with me to this day. And, and I think what's really powerful about that is that was not feedback asked 
for at the end of your grade seven year, right? Like mm-hmm. that was, no. right? And so like a lot of times when in education, and I've been guilty of this too, like earlier in my career, mm-hmm. you'd ask for feedback at the end of the year, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, well, great for the next class, great for the next class, right? But it's not going to help me at all. And so, yeah. um, you know, later on, I started asking for more feedback so I can incorporate that. And I know you and I, we got to, we, we love our sports. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that, uh, when I ref basketball, uh, how you move up really quickly is people don't know this, but when you're refing, uh, especially at higher levels, people are sitting in, in the crowd watching you that are evaluating you. And mm-hmm. then in the, at halftime, they basically like tear you apart. Like they really? don't have time for compliments, right? Like <laughs> you got 10 minutes. So they just tell you all the things you're doing wrong. Right. Yeah. So it's not that they don't think you're doing things right. It's just they don't have time to like, you know, reaffirm you. Yeah. And so where you, how you actually move up quickly in the refing ranks is do they actually see your implementation of their feedback mm. in the second half, right? So they don't really? want you like, and they're like, hey, you know, I'm going to like think about this. You know, I'm going like, to consider <laughs> this, game. right? And then, and then maybe don't do it. They're like saying, and so like sometimes I would say like, hey, I tried it, but it didn't work for me. And here's why it didn't work for me. And they respected that you at least gave it a shot to yeah. implement that feedback. So they're, they're basically looking for sponges. And so I think, you know, the best feedback mm-hmm. we can get is from, you know, the people we serve every single day, but yeah, do we, man. how quickly do we implement that too? So I, so I love that. So, so you know, you know what's happening, right? Come on, then, come on. Know, Let's go. go. Thank you. Get me back to the swing. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. I love so it. So when I was in Harris County, I met some yeah. really incredible administrators uh, one of the things that really kind of resonated with me was you didn't just have, uh, you had incredible administrators, uh, your superintendent was incredible. Uh, but I also met new teachers, but I also met, I, I also met teachers who are not in the profession mm-hmm. who were like wanting to be in there. They were invited. They were a part of it too. And it was like really neat yeah. to see like basically people that have been there for a while, people that are like new to the profession, people that are like kind of learning um you know kind of being there and and so like i really the reason i bring this up and before i ask you about the leadership question Mm -hmm. is i i remember i'll I'll tell about two districts one district i was in for five years never met the superintendent ever yeah the other district i met the superintendent the very first day of my on the job and Mm -hmm. and really there's such a difference in how how it felt in in either of those communities because like you know you, you should know that, you know, they should know you to connect with you. Right. And just to even yep. think like, to even go a step further is like people, not even a profession connect with the superintendent seeing that vision is really mm-hmm. powerful. So I know you work with some really great administrators. So when you think yeah. about your career, some of the, the great administrators you worked with, uh, maybe had as a kid, who's someone that sticks out to you and why? Yeah, George, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate, man. I've had a lot of people pour some wisdom into me, man. Give me just different nuggets. You know, my current superintendent, Jim, uh, James Cover, um, you know. Could you just wait, hold on. James, yeah. you're listening. Yeah. 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 That's, two, that's, two. We got, that's three, on. right? Uh, two. Let me rattle off a couple more. You know, Jarvis Sanford, Ellen Ryder, you know, Megan McCarter, Angel Turner, Devon Horton. All of them, all of them. Yeah, man. But you know, the one, the one that I that that really resonates with me the most, man, is, um, you know, Elizabeth Kirby. Mm-hmm. You know, and the story is similar to many of the stories that you know that that I hear on your podcast, man. Liz Kirby was the first one to really pour into me, man. She saw in me some things that I didn't even see in myself. Um, you know. I remember when I first started, so I never wanted to, I never aspired to be a teacher. My goal, George, was I was going to be a college basketball coach, right? Yep. But then, you know, you start traveling in the middle of the night and, you know, the Northeast. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if I want to, I just want to coach basketball. Um, and so that led me into teaching because I was like, hey, teaching, I can still right. coach basketball, you know, and I could teach on the side. But like, right, right. right. <laughs> Um, so I started out just as a, as, as not even an assistant coach, just helping out at this high school. And I was going to get my teaching certification stuff during the day. I go after that, go help out at the high school. Uh, and then I was subbing all over the city of Chicago and, you know, 
again, pr principal comes in, observe practice, and she sees me, and she's like, oh, so you're the Mr. Rogers, Coach Rogers, that the kids are talking about. Mm. I'm like, yeah, you know, it's an honor to meet you, you know, um, just – just, you know, at, just that alone, just coming and acknowledging wow. somebody yeah. who's, you know, who's volunteering. Um, she's like, hey, what are you doing right now? And I was like, well, I, um, I'm i I'm subbing across the city. She says, look, don't sub again. Just come here um, and just report here from from here on out. Uh, there's some, everything just started falling in line. Um, I got a teaching job there in the middle of the year. I was able to continue coaching. Um, and, and she said to me, you know, cause now I was like, okay, I'm set. I can teach, but then now how do I become a better coach? I'm going to be a Dean. I'm going to be the Dean and I'm going to coach basketball. And she says, uh, there's no way that you're going to be the Dean here. There is no way you need to be leading a school. The passion that you show for these kids, um, just how you're just in it all the time. You need to lead a school. And, um, she was like, I know a great leadership program that I want you to apply for. And she was like, but here's the deal. You got to put the whistle down. And, you know, uh -huh. that, that, that was, that was, I was like, oh, now I believe in everything that you've said. And, I, you know, I'm going to follow you to, to the end of time. Um, but, you know, she was ultimately right. And, you know, I put the whistle yeah. down. Um, she really pushed my instructional lens. Um, she's always always, always, even to this day, she's the current superintendent right now, um, back home uh, where she's from in Ohio. But to this day, she, she serves as a thought partner. And there, I'm, I'm telling you, George, there are plenty of times where Liz should have, she could have easily disowned me, right. you know, but she always said to me, you know, I know exactly what you are trying to do. And I want to help you get there. You just haven't figured out the right, the right route to get there politically. And I'll help you and I'm going to stick with you. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's just something about like just seeing something in me that I didn't see in myself and just the forgiving heart that she had. And she taught me because until this point, I always thought leadership was, man, I'm the boss. I tell everybody what to right. do. Right. Um, and she completely shifted that. I'm like, man, how are you able to still have these relationships with people, but, you know, get people to do what you uh, what you need for them to do? Um, she she was a wizard, man, when it came to that kind of stuff. Um, so Liz, appreciate you, Liz Curry. Liz, if you're listening, there it is. There That's, it is. Awesome. That's awesome. You know, it's funny that yeah. you said about the the coaching thing, right? Because I actually yeah. remember I got hired for a job at uh, high school, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like a it was a technology job. Not many people applied for it, and I remember the principal saying this to me. He's like, you know we're gonna offer you the job but i'm gonna tell you i have this little concern that you're more interested in coaching basketball than you are teaching i'm like <laughs> probably right yeah <laughs> you're probably, you're probably right yeah. and and but then but then it's like exactly the same thing like i could say the same you know i could probably tell a very similar story about kelly wilkins saw something different in me saw a talent and brought it out in me it wasn't that it wasn't yeah. there it's that i didn't see it right and i yeah. think that's that's where that's really powerful so um that, that's 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 awesome. I, no wonder we get, we were like basically. Yeah, I'm telling you the same person. George. We're like, like you know, we love all the same stuff, and even the bear yeah. stuff. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So I love you, it. Man. You don't get too many volunteer bear fans. That's not from Chicago. <laughs> right. I right. tell you that much. We stick through it, right? Loyal, no matter yeah. how bad they are. But this is their year yeah. again. This is their year. Yeah. This, is <laughs> this is the one. All yeah. right, man. Last last question. So you, yeah. you obviously, you know, shared a lot of your journey, some of the stuff that you've learned. Oh, I got to tell you this too, CJ. This is actually yeah, quite a, you don't know this. So you, so I don't know what it is, but Harris County, when I email you all, like my email just goes to your junk. So I don't yeah. know. If I'm yeah. Glad. <laughs> I know you know that part. Cause you like, yeah. right. So right after, right after I was out there, I emailed you right away. And yeah. I like said, Hey, I want you my podcast. Yeah. And, uh, you didn't see it for a while. You checked your yeah. junk email and then I showed up right a couple of weeks after yeah. I'm like, I just, I just, I was all a lie. You didn't like it. <laughs> right? But here's a, here's the part you don't know. So actually someone, someone reached out to me, um, yeah. from your district who has great respect for you and said, you need to get CJ on your podcast. And you know what I said? I already asked him. 
Yeah. Like, you know, hey. So it was probably, you know, within one day she, and she said about like, Hey, it was so great to see you connecting. But the, the reason I wanted to share that, and especially I want to share that with you because kudos like CJ, gets an air horn, right? but it wasn't, it was just that. But I, I, one of the reasons I want to share this is that a lot of times I think people get really frustrated because we don't elevate people in our own communities. Like we'll, we'll like, we'll like talk about people outside that they're amazing and absolutely incredible. But this person went out of their way saying, like, you got to highlight my colleague. My colleague is absolutely amazing. And I really appreciated that. But it was also awesome. And I'm like, yeah, I already did that. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> this was like, oh, perfect. So she was like pumped. Yeah. And it's funny because I even said, and this is where I'm like, did this? Because she never responded back to me. I said, yeah. make sure you tell him to check his junk email. Yeah. Just in case I went to, and then she never responded back to me. And then weeks <laughs> later, you reached out. So I thought that was funny. Yeah. Anyways. I had to share that with you. I yeah. just was so, and that's I think that you know it ties in to um, ties into your Liz story, and the the reason that's why I thought of it is because yeah. it doesn't matter your profession, it doesn't matter where you are in the flow chart or whatever the organizational yeah. chart. We can elevate other people. It doesn't matter if they're above us in that or below or you know lateral yeah. or right. It, it, that's that makes all the difference. Like edu education is about elevation. I truly believe that. Yeah. And so you look at. Um, all the stuff that you learned in your career. And I know that we mentioned that you had like first year teachers, people that were just entered the profession. So if you go back and talk to CJ in your very first year of teaching yeah. to give yourself some advice, what would that be? Yeah. George, before I answer that, let me, let me shout out Angela Seagraves. Let me, let me give her her, her shout out. You know, and, awesome. And I mean, she, that's what I love about Harris County Department of Ed. Like, it's full of it's full with people you know who are just like that so me, i just want to make sure i give her her shout out. <laughs> you just want to get the horn right I got you. yeah <laughs> um man you so to answer your question here's and i've been i've been thinking a lot about this because i'm like man i know george is gonna ask me this question what what can i say to my you know my first year self now mind you right i was a coach basketball coach yep. teaching on the side right but what i would say to myself is that man teaching is like gardening, right? Like I got this new, new thing where I like, I like plant flowers. I wouldn't even call it gardening because it would be a disrespect to <laughs> those folks who are actually really good at gardening. Right. right? right, right. I'm just planting flowers. Right. Um, but it's never the flower's fault. Like if the, if the flower isn't doing well, like nobody's like, man, that's a bad flower, man. Like I, right. I can't, right. like you're always like, Oh man, maybe it needs some more of this or, you know, and now they have apps, right? Where you can take a picture of the flower and the app tell you, hey, give it a little bit more water, right? Um, I wish that I had taken that approach much sooner in my career than I did, right? Um, because, man, and, and again, I, I, there's not, there is regret, right? Like, I'll, I'll be honest, like, there are some students where I'm like, man, I wish I had had you when I was a third year teacher, right? Because, I'm better now and I know exactly what you needed. And I realized why we didn't or why I didn't click the way that I wanted it to click. Um, but man, if I would have just had that, you know, like, look, no, they just need a different, they, he needs to be seated somewhere else. Right. Like, right. or I need to, you know, you know, back then we had those, what are those overhead projectors that like, man, I, I need to bring in the computer a little bit more for this, right. for this right. student. Right. Yeah, it's okay for him to listen to his iPad right now or iPod right now because that's what he needs to get, a, you know. It was just, I just wish I had done those things. And so, you know, what I would say to myself was, man, look, it's gardening. Look, there's no such thing as a bad flower. You know, like, man, it just needs a different kind of uh, a seasoning or right. soil or this kind of water. So that, that that's the thing that I would say. And that, and that is like, you know, I, I actually, I think I wrote about this in Innovator's Mindset. Mm -hmm. And because and, I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that because I remember same thing in my career. I, you know, early on, I'm like, you will learn the way I teach you. Like, I remember just <laughs> like, that class. Like, no, no, no. You're going to adjust to me. That's how this is yeah. going to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And really kind of saying like, I, I would, if any, if I ever said that now, I'd be like really bothered by it. Right. Like your whole <laughs> thing. And it's the same thing with leadership, right? You know, this with coaching yeah. too. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things, hey, I know you're from Chicago, right? Like, you're, yep. I know you're a Chicago fan, but like one of the things uh, Phil Jackson did that I loved, absolutely loved, right, is that he actually um, 
I always talk about this because in educators, like, you know, we'll buy everyone, get the same book, blah, blah, blah. He actually yeah. knew each one of his players and he would actually buy them different books based yeah. on what he felt they needed, where they could go. And like, how mm -hmm. much do you have to know to, but like he, his whole thing was, look, every player has an important role on this team. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, even though they're not Michael, like, and that, like that includes Michael Jordan, right? Like, yeah, that's, yeah. That's part of it too. like, and it's the, the person that's 12th on the bench. And so I got to bring out the best in them. So my approach is different for each of these people. Not like yeah. you have to adjust to me. And in the end, like he's won the most titles of any coach in history. So that's, that's something yeah. about the approach, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, man. That, that's the name of the game. Love it. I love it. Well, CJ, <laughs> it is awesome to have you on. And I'll give you one last for taking the time out of your day. But there hey, make sure you say hi to everyone at Harris County for me. And uh, yeah, I love it. I can't wait to talk to you more. So everyone, thank you for listening. CJ, thanks for being on. Thanks, bro.